Hey, what's up everyone? Today's video, we are going to see how we can get the values from lookup columns in SharePoint, multi-select, and send everything over an email with a nice HTML formatted table. So if you like this video, make sure to hit the button and subscribe for more. I am in a SharePoint library, and in that library, I have a few documents. For each of those documents, I have some metadata. We have the name of the document, the level for that specific course, the products that we're going to talk about in those courses, and the approval status. You can see that the products column is the column that is a multi-select lookup. And this lookup is coming from the products list. Here, I'm only using the title. If we go back into the courses docs, we're going to create a flow that is going to grab all the courses where the approval status, which is a choice column, is set to approval in progress. Right now, we don't have any, so I'm gonna change one. I'm going to select, just edit in grid view, and I'm gonna change that one and exit the grid view. Let's go over to Power Automate. And just for demo purposes, we're going to use an instant flow. So we're gonna trigger it with just a button. We're not gonna add any input and we're gonna click on next step. The next step is to get all our files from that library. So we're gonna choose get files properties only going to choose my SharePoint site, choose my document library. And if we look at the advanced options, we can actually filter for our scenario because the only documents we are interested in is where the approval status is set to approval in progress. And we're gonna grab our approval status column. Let's go back to SharePoint. Go into the library settings, more library settings, we're gonna click on our column. And then at the top, we have our column name. Let's grab this and go back to Power Automate. We want to filter when the approval status is equal and we're gonna open the single quote, approval in progress, and we close the single quote. Next, we're gonna decide what we want to see on the email that we are going to send. And if we go back into SharePoint, we could just grab a couple of columns in here. I wanna send the name of the document, the level and the products. So we are going to select those fields. Click next step. We're gonna choose the select action. The from field is going to be the value from our preview step. And then we're gonna start mapping our fields. So we said we wanted the products. This one is our multi-select lookup column. So I'm going to enter a specific formula in here. And because it's a little bit complex with the syntax, I'm gonna paste this formula into the description of the video. The only thing you have to change here is the name of your lookup column. So my lookup column is the products column. And then at the end, you can also change which separator you wanna use if you have multiple values. In that case, I'm using a semicolon. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna to go to expression and paste it and click on okay. Next, we wanted the level. And because this one is a choice, if we look for level, we have the level value. And finally, we wanted the name of the document. And we're gonna choose the extension as well. File name with extension. We're gonna save the flow and we're gonna run it. So the flow runs successfully. And if we expand the select, the output is going to be the manage SharePoint with PowerShell. And if we go back 
into SharePoint, we can see that this is exactly the one that is set to approval in progress. Let's go back to Power Automate. And now we are going to create our HTML table. Click on next step, create HTML table, choose the one from the data operation. And once again, the from field is going to be the output of our select action. Now, obviously we could just leave it like that, but we like when the HTML tables are formatted nicely. And there are plenty of resources out there to style your HTML table. So you can easily find a resource that will make it really penless. Let's click on next step. And this time we're going to add a compose action. And I have some code for the way I want to format my HTML table. So I'm just going to paste it there. I'm going to rename that to HTML style. And then the last step is going to be send our email. For now, we're just going to assume that there is at least one of the documents that is set to awaiting approval. Click on next step, send email. We have the V2. I'm going to send it to myself. Add a subject and then in the body, we're just going to make up something quick. And here, this is where we are going to insert our HTML table. So there are actually two ways that we can do this. If we look at the code that I have in the HTML style in here, it's literally just the format for my HTML table. And so what we could do here is we could add the output of this HTML style, and then just next to it, we could add the HTML table. Or the other way would be to simply add in that HTML style at the very end, we are going to add the output of the create HTML table action. And this way, when we are in the email, we can choose the HTML style directly, which is our preview step. Now let's save it and run the flow. The flow ran successfully. I'm going to open my email. And we have received the email and that's the way it would look like. We have our products and we have our multi-select lookup values in it, PowerShell and SharePoint. We have our level and the document name with the extension. Let's see what happens if there is actually nothing to approve. So I'm going to go back to SharePoint and I'm going to change that again into whatever I want. So let's say it needs updating, for example going to exit the grid view and now there's nothing to approve. So let's run the flow again. We get the email and now we have a problem because it's still sending the email. And what's happening is that because there's nothing to approve, then the array from the select is empty. If we look at the flow and we look at the select value, we can see that the array is actually empty. So we want to prevent that in case there's nothing to approve. We're going to add a condition. Let's edit the flow again. And just before the email, we're going to add a condition. And we're going to check if the output of the array is empty or not. Let's go into expression and we're going to write empty. Let's go back into dynamic content and we want to check if the array from the select action is empty. So if we scroll down, we have the output of the select and then we can click on OK. If the output of the select 
is equal to true in that case, then what do we want to do? If the array is empty, we can decide to either send an email still just to say that there's nothing to approve or we just don't do anything. You need to find this balance between spamming people just to say there's nothing to approve, for example, if you set this flow to be a weekly reminder. And if no, so if the array is not empty, this is when we want to send the email. So we're just going to drag and drop into the no path. In the yes section, we could also add the action to terminate the flow directly, but there's no more action after this. So it's not necessary in my specific case. Now let's save the flow and run it again. Remember that we do not have anything to approve in here. So we should be going into the yes path. Let's test it. And the flow runs successfully. If we expand the condition, the array was actually empty. So it went into the yes path. And if we change a couple of courses in here, we have two courses that have multiple selections in here. So we're going to change those two. Exit the grid view. And let's go back into Power Automate. Simply run the flow again one last time. And this time, if we look at the condition, it went and sent the email. Let's check it out. And this time we have our two courses with all the values in the products and then level and document name. So I hope this video has been useful to you and don't forget to subscribe for more. See you in the next one.